I've not seen such bravery. A big selling point for some games these days is the idea of multiple endings, branching pathways, the idea that you as a player are affecting the world of the game and that your choices matter. It's not often that we see a game brag about having a linear storyline. I mean, sure they may mention it, but they're not going to go out of their way to boast about it. Well, today we're going to look at a game that was apparently so thrilled to force you to stick to their storyline that they named the game after that very idea. Today, we're going to be doing our best to stick to the Critical Path. Critical Path is a game released in 1994, developed by Mechadeus, who interestingly enough would become Mondo Media and go on to produce some familiar online shows like Dr. Tran and Happy Tree Friends. The game stars Eileen Weisinger in her first acting role. She would go on to have various small acting roles here and there, but seems to be most successful as a stunt performer, where she has quite an impressive portfolio. But don't let all of this positivity get you fooled. I mean, just because some of the people involved went on to do impressive things, doesn't make Critical Path a good game. Is it a good game? I don't know. Let's find out. The game opens with some credits and then, oof, look at that teeny tiny video. I show you this so you don't have to wonder why it looks so bad when I scale it up. The original files are only 240 by 180 pixels, so you're gonna have to kind of bear with me on the video quality here. Earth has been devastated by a third world war. Really? Oh my God, I can't wait to see what it looks like. It began when terrorists obtained biological and nuclear weapons. Okay, uh, well, show me what it looks like then. Today, 90% of the world's population lies Dead. In a world where a bunch of cool stuff happened, people died, bombs exploded, but uh, we don't have the budget to show you any of that, so here's some water. Uh, what's wrong with that, okay? Ah, I see. During the Third World War, it looks like radio communication technology was fused with kazoo technology. I have no idea what these people are saying. The helicopters approach an island for some reason. I'm still not totally sure why. According to the opening monologue, I think we're a small group of sane survivors of nuclear warfare looking for a safe haven. Excellent. But as you can tell from the ominous guitar riff, I have a feeling this isn't going to go as planned. One of the helicopters makes a landing, while the aircraft piloted by the main character, Cat, remains airborne. Ignition units gone. Those bulge impacts spared. What are these people even saying? I feel like I'm missing important plot points here. Cat takes off for an airfield, but doesn't get very far before tragedy strikes. And warning, if you're easily disturbed, you might want to look away for this part. Oh, the horror, it's too much. Let's, uh, let's see it one more time, though. The obvious question here is, how is this guy dying, but Cat came out completely unharmed? But the real question is, why does she have a calculator strapped to her wrist? Cat, before I die, could you tell me the square root of 324? Ugh. All right, all right, stop, pause the show. I have no idea what's going on. I'm almost positive that we don't control Cat, but I have no idea where our character even is. I feel like I missed some important dialogue here, so I'm just gonna take a peek at the game synopsis in here. Okay, so there's two helicopters. In one are Cat and, I'm not sure what this guy's name is, Night Force Joe? Night Force Joe! So we've got Night Force Joe and Cat in this helicopter, and we're in this helicopter, which is being piloted by someone named Greer. A part in our helicopter is busted, and we need a replacement, so Cat salvages the part from the crashed helicopter and begins making her way towards us. Why did we think this island would be a sanctuary? I don't know. Sounds like someone didn't quite do the math. Cat, you okay? I can see you on the security camera above you, to your right. Where's Greer? Greer is dead. My leg is full of shrapnel. Oh no. Night Horse is dead too. Oh, Night Horse. I was pretty close. Before we even get a chance to learn the purpose of the panel in front of us, Cat begins to move. We have to help her get to our chopper safely through the use of security cameras, a camera that she's wearing, and a control panel that does... Well, we still have to figure that part out. Nine rounds. Nine lives. Great. At least it does double. If there's anything you can do, soldier, you 
better do it now. Uh, shoot, I don't know what to do. This button? This one? I opened a shoot, did that help? Ah! Ooh, guess not. Wait, she has eight lives left? So they gave Cat nine lives? That's pretty bad. But not as bad as the fact that I have no idea what to do. I'm just randomly clicking buttons, hoping that one of them does something to help out, but none of them seem to do anything. The only kind of feedback I get is when I try and turn on a siren. It shuts off and then says, no, no, too loud. Like, come on, isn't that the point of a siren? To be loud? Ah, well, it doesn't matter. Cat dies over and over over again as the game of continual trial and error drags on. When she got down to five lives, I won't lie, I caved and looked up the answer, because I'm seriously lost here. Apparently what we have to do is activate the detonator by typing in one, two, three on the control panel and pressing the red button. All right, one, two, three, and push the red button. Uh, push the red button? Uh, push the red button. Push the button, Frank, one, two, three, button. Just push the button. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be one of those games, isn't it? Not only is the action you do important in Critical Path, but the time at which you do it is just as specific. To get past this section, we can't kill the people attacking Cat until she finishes saying her line. So even if you figure out what you're supposed to do, it's possible to mess it up because there's really no indication as to when that action becomes available. So this should be fun, right? Cat climbs into some minecarts that are being operated by someone else, which means that we probably aren't the only ones at a control panel. <laughs> Okay, we're definitely not the only one at a control panel. Cat's minecart lines up with a lift and she begins her ascent. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. I'm inbound! I can't get off the shot! And you have another surprise! Now's the time to use it! Get it! Can't you do something? Can I do something? Uh nope. Sorry. So the big question here is, am I missing something? I mean, surely there's something to help us out here. Well, luckily I am, and there is. This notebook here contains the writings of, presumably, the person who not only works in this tower, but also the leader of this entire operation against Cat. You can also clearly tell that he's gone insane, a fact they convey through rampant capitalization errors. The page here talks about the lift we're on. He writes that by pushing 152, we can trigger an explosion. Oh, there they go. What a gruesome effect. All right, now she's on a conveyor belt, and I actually know how to save her this time. Stop conveyor belt. Okay, stop conveyor belt. Stop conveyor belt. Oh my god! Ah! What? Even when the answer is right in front of us, stop conveyor belt. It just doesn't work. Somehow I managed to do the action both too early and too late. So I'm supposed to press the button after this camera change, which I did, but apparently it was too late. I'm also getting the message, let her get a little hotter, which I think is intended to help with the timing, but it only added to my confusion as it popped up while she was falling into the lava. It's hard to wait any longer than that. I am kind of glad I got to see her die here though. Look at how slow the conveyor belt is moving when she launches herself off of it. You can even see her push off with her arm. So after we correctly time our button press, Cat moves forward and we get a nice little glimpse of the man behind all of this insanity. Welcome to my facility! <laughs> I'm General Min. You and your lovely friend have been quite amusing so far. I am most anxious to meet her in person. Assuming, of course, she survives! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty funny. Still, still funny, I guess. <laughs> Cat finally descends the steps of the giant vat of lava and of course is immediately swarmed by enemies. This isn't a game, they're gonna kill me! Oh my God, I don't know what to do and this is Cat's last life. I really don't want to start over from the beginning, but I also don't think I can stop it. <laughs> Wow, that was an overwhelmingly disappointing game over screen. I guess someone started to shoot at us from behind and we just didn't bother to turn around? 
Lucky for us, there's really no consequence for losing all of our lives. We're able to load the last area that we beat, and we start off with the number of lives that we had left. So, instead of just starting from where we left off, we start from where we left off. I guess they just gave Cat nine lives for the sake of the joke. After opening the furnace to save Cat, who somehow didn't die from the lava that's pouring all over the place, we operate a crane for her. Whoa! The rest of the game has been thoroughly disappointing, but this is a pretty cool moment at least. Hurry up! Oh, hush. This is not my idea of flying, Private. Shh, Cat, you're ruining this for me. My hand is slipping. Look, I know you're holding on for your life or whatever, but I'm trying to enjoy this, okay? Cat drops down onto a catwalk and then comes a bit more straightforward level. She's unable to see because her eyes are burning because of, uh. My eyes are burning! I don't know, just because. Using the arrows on the screen, we have to tell her when and what direction to turn. If we make a mistake, she plummets to her death. No big deal. Once we've successfully reached the exit, we receive a bit of a refresh on the plot. It's just a game. A sick game. With some maniac pulling the strings. Thanks for that, cat. And it's on to the next room. Can you believe this? The sick son of a was using these crosses to smuggle drugs. Oh, what kind of second-rate drug operation is this? They're just leaving the drugs on the floor? You know what, you should take pride in your work, even if you are smuggling drugs. I guess. After climbing a ladder, Kat finds herself being pursued and in desperate need of assistance. But once again, it takes me too long to find the right page in the notebook and decipher what I'm supposed to do, so she gets shot and... <laughs> I just love how she falls here. It looks like a big gust of wind caught hold of her umbrella and carried her away. What I'm actually supposed to do is enter the Number of Satan, which provides an equally entertaining cutscene. There it is. Cat wanders around for a bit and then finds herself smack dab in the middle of a torture chamber. Please, I beg you. What are you doing here? The General. General Min and the others. They're insane. They blocked me up and left me here to die. Yeah? Please! Release me! No. I can get you out of here. No. You're lucky they didn't no. kill you already. No. Wait a minute. No! No! Oh. Oh, come on, Cat. You know better than that. Can you walk? Yes. Just give me a moment. It's been so long. Alert! Alert! Don't give him Don't a moment! Ah, Cat, you're really... stupid, you know? While she's busy regretting her life choices, I'm able to look up how to turn on the electric chair so we can fry this guy. Entering the temperature at which paper burns? Are you serious? It's hard enough to figure out the thing I'm supposed to do, harder to figure out the exact moment I'm supposed to do it, but now you're gonna make me look up what temperature paper burns at? Who writes this kind of crap in a journal? He's an insane general, not an insane... Paper scientist. <laughs> oh, yep, there he goes. Whoa, what kind of electric chair is this? Shocking. You really ought to quit smoking. All right, you can't double dip with the one-liners. Either it's shocking or he should have quit smoking. And you probably should have just stuck with shocking because we have no idea if this guy even smoked. Cat makes it to an elevator and actually arrives at the helicopter. I'm kind of surprised that we made it. Welcome, my little gato. <laughs> I'm General Ben. You've done very well, but now the game is over. Oh, hey, it looks like we finally get to turn on that siren. That's something, right? I like that she waited for him to look away, look back, and then a few more seconds before actually shooting him. Good plan, Cat. Okay, soldier, you've got a plane to catch. Uh, no, that's not an airplane. It's a helicopter, Cat. You're the one flying me out of here. I'd really prefer if you knew the difference between the two. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it, but we just... We gotta see it one more time. Welcome aboard! I guess somehow we got onto the helicopter? Don't think we're gonna get an explanation for that one. This one's for 
Joe Nightworth, sucker! That was, perhaps, the greatest ending to a game I've ever seen before. The cheesiness is real here. Look at how bad all of it looks. And to top it all off, Kat's closing line is, this one's for Joe Nighthorse, sucker. It's perfect. This one's for Joe Nighthorse, sucker. I don't think it's possible for this moment to be ruined for me. This cat has 10 lives. Ah, uh, boo. Critical Path was quite an experience, and I don't mean that in a good way. I found out after playing it that it's made its way onto a worst PC games of all time list by PC Gamer, so at least I know I'm not alone in my complaints. Though it had some memorable moments, most of this game was really frustrating. Figuring out what to do wasn't fun at all, and even less fun was finding out that you were doing the right thing just at the wrong time, since there's no clear indication as to when you're actually supposed to do things. Its biggest strength is that it's kind of like a cheesy action movie, but you'd be better off just watching a cheesy action movie instead of playing this. At least we can revel in the fact that Kat's entire trip here was pointless, and that two of her friends died for more or less no reason. Oh yeah, and also this. Hey there, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please think about giving it a like and subscribing if you haven't already. If you're looking for more laughs, you should check out Youngtown's 80s styled Super Mario Maker training video. It's pretty much one of the best things ever. Also, if you're a fan of live gaming, be sure to give my Twitch page a follow and come hang out during one of my streams sometime. They're pretty chill, I think you'll enjoy it. Then click a block, that's a mystery, and drag a mushroom to it so we can't succeed. And anything can fit in the block. A Goomba, a coin, or a flower, that's hot. My favorite thing. Go, go!